Hello, everybody, and welcome to an all-new episode of the Two Minute Drive podcast. I'm your main host, Jake Ramirez, with my co-host, Robert Palacios and Abraham Trevino, and special so, guest returning, Marco Salinas. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Marco, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good to be back. Two-time, two-time special guest host. He's kind of he's kind of like the like like the Rob Parker of of the yeah, Fox Sports, huh? <laughs> don't 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 degrade him to Rob Parker. That guy's a piece uh, of trash. Nah, Rob Mar- Parker. Mar- hey. Nah, fuck Rob Parker. Uh, uh, Marcos has better insight than that it, guy. It's it's get... because it's because you're you're Shannon. That's why you're Shannon Sharp. That's why. Uh, gotta be um, in the background, just you know, passing <laughs> sources, you know. <laughs> uh, Jacob, what do you got in the docket today, man? Yeah, the docket. Uh, we're going to talk about quick coaching changes, guys, around the NFL as of right now. Uh, there's a little bit of injuries, not really too many, uh, going into the championship round. Uh, we'll do a quick kind of rundown of the draft order. Uh, we got our prediction and picks uh, for the conference championship games. And then we're going to quickly go over our Super Bowl picks, just uh, what we had originally earlier in the year. And that's pretty much it for what's on the docket for today, guys. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Abe, you do, or I mean, uh, I'm sure Marcos remembers his Super Bowl pick, but you have it marked down, right? Just yeah, I need to get it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and run it. I don't know. We're not talking about that yet, but uh, eventually we'll, we'll 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 get to it. Uh, Jake, let's start off with the coaches. Where do you, where do you want to begin? Do you want to go with the biggest story? It just broke probably like about an hour hour and a half ago. Yeah, we can go with breaking news since uh, Robert broke the news. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, that is Jim Harbaugh is leaving Michigan University to come back to the NFL to coach, ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles Chargers with Justin Herbert. I'm super excited about this. I don't know how you guys feel. Let's let's go around the table here. Jake, Marco. what are your thoughts on this? Well, Marcos. Marcos, okay, Marcos yeah. first. Coming up as a winning, you know, Michigan champions, you know, good players coach, you know, I've been hearing all day, you know, this, this deal was going to happen soon. They were just working out the numbers. So yeah, I'm glad that he's there. He's going to do good. You know, he's a good winner. Uh, Justin Herbert, a good team, you know, he can bring out that mentality of, you know, fighting hard for him. So yeah, he's a good guy, man. Jake. Yeah, like pretty much what Mark said to piggyback off that. But uh, Herbert's, I mean, a really good quarterback. I've always liked the kid. Uh, I had said earlier in the year he had that injury. He had like a pinky finger that was broken or something. Something like that. that. Like the entire year he was off, like I think because of that little injury. But Harbo coming to help him out, like as far as the coaching goes, I mean, we all know this Harbo legend. His brother is the coach of the, the Ravens, you know. They're both legends in their own right. It's going to bring uh, – they're going to just have a good winning record this coming season for sure. Yeah, I think they just uh, – what the Harbaugh's bring is culture, and I think that's what the Chargers need right now. I mean, they're they're good on the offensive side of the ball, and they, they had a coach that was defensive-minded but, you know, had the players but just didn't have the, the culture set in place. And I think Harbaugh will bring a balance to that. And uh, like I said, I've been waiting for that Chargers coach to get the boot since like last season, because uh, I you don't want to waste like a, a great talent like Justin Herbert and his. He's, I think he's just about to enter his prime. I guess we can safely say that. So Harbaugh's coming in at the right time. Um, I have high expectations now with him coming in. So like I'm expecting them in the playoffs. Like I don't know how far, depending on what they do in free agency in the draft, but um, it's a definitely one of the best pickups. He was probably the best prospect out there as far as like free agent coaches abraham how do you feel about uh harbo going to the Chargers, man with, with herbert i think that i think that was great i mean because uh it was either between him and bilicek uh, right robert um i put them to vrabel even though we haven't heard much about vrabel but i have a theory on him which i'll talk about in a bit yeah i, I think this is a great pickup um I, I don't know if y'all kept up with college football but there was all those like scandals going on with him with harbaugh right. and i think it was I, th- I don't know i mean i think it was good for him to kind of step out of that and coming to come back to the nfl where he was successful robert if you remember when Correct. he was with the 49ers. um right. i think this is great this is big for the city of of, of california or los angeles and with herbert um, you know, Harbaugh, you know, can, can develop him or make him better than what he is. And then of course, like you said, if they do 
if they put some pieces around him, um, you know, with, with either free agency or, or through the draft, I think this is going to be a great addition. Um, I, I want to see what kind of staff. I mean, Robert, do you think he's going to go ahead and, and, of course, he's probably going to pick his staff, right? And of, of coordinators and whatnot. Um, so, or, well, actually, actually, well, Kellen Moore is still there, right? So obviously he's going to keep him probably and see how he does this year, right? Yeah, I'd probably keep him another year. And if he does well, then <clears throat> he'll then probably he'll be up with... for He'll be up with, for his own coaching position. I think he was even a name in the offseason. I don't know how much, I don't know if he got an interview with the, Panthers or anything like that. I know I heard about that earlier right. when the a little bit before when the playoffs started. But um yeah, I expect them to keep him another year and the offensive side of the ball, we don't have to worry about. What was wrong with the Chargers is that the defense was always letting teams stay neck and neck with them and that that's why they would lose these close games. So Harbaugh will change that. Yeah, I think this was great. This is good. Yeah, I definitely see them going to the playoffs. I'll I'll call it right now for sure next year who else jake uh right now i'm looking at we got tennessee titans former coach mike rabel new coach brian callahan robert yes the oc for the Bengals. um that coach has been around a while he's worked under some uh i don't want to say legends but a lot of veteran coaches so he's got that experience um i don't know if he's a culture builder that's i think that's for me that's what it comes down to is like you can have your side of the ball right and all that. You can be like a good OC, but are you a culture changer? Like, I think Tennessee needs like a leader. And I mean, to me, I don't think they should have fired Mike Vrabel because I think he's a he's a great leader. I don't know if he's a great coach, but he's a, a good leader. But I just, he knew he didn't have the pieces there in place. And there's probably stuff going on behind the scenes with the, with the upper management. So he wanted out of there. So I don't <clears> think he <throat> minded being fired. Um but we'll we'll see what this Callahan does. But I don't know. I don't think it's going to affect the Bengals too much because I think the they just have too much generational talent with Burrow <laughs> and and Jamar Chase. So I think they'll be okay losing this guy. What do you think, Mark? So yeah. So this guy, uh, you know, he's a QB's coach. So he's coached, you know, of course Burrow, but you know, he also coached with Peyton Manning in in Denver. So. You know, this guy could, you know, help, you know, Will Levis uh, get better at this. So he, he's he's got the talent there. You see that you saw his arm last year. He showed that he has some arm talent and yeah. he's a good quarterback and everything. So uh, with this guy, he could probably, you know, coach him up there to be one of the top <clears throat> quarterbacks. So. Yeah, I won't say much on him, but just besides that, he uh, he helped bring two AFC North Division championships and a Super Bowl appearance following that 2021 season. So. Yeah, he's. Uh, he knows well, I think he's uh, I think Joe Burrow had a lot to do with that, but <laughs> just saying. Of course. Hey, hey, what, hey, why do you feel about Brian Callahan? Yeah, I like this guy. This guy broke out into the scene back in 2010 when he was with Denver. Um, so that's when that's when he started getting noticed. Um, he's going to have a task ahead of him developing with uh, Will Levis. I, I I don't think this guy. I don't think Will Levis. I mean, maybe he might have some potential, but uh, I like to see Kirk Cousins maybe go there and see uh, about you know on that offense. Um, but I think this might be something good. I mean, uh, now with the NFL, they're 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 trending to the younger guys, where they wanted like the like the McBays and stuff like that and and stuff. So um, I, I think this might work out good. He's an offensive guy, so um, I, I mean, they, I mean, Robert, would you say they had issues on both ends, right, offense and defense? So maybe he might help them out here with the offensive side. On the offensive side, like like Marcos mentioned, you know, let, let's see what he can do with Will Levis. I'm sure, like, um, I'm sure the upper management, the owners are going to be like, hey, let's see what you can get out of this guy. And if he's not it, then maybe go draft another quarterback next year. But I guess they're going to see how much they can get out of this kid. Um, I know he, I forgot when he started over Tannehill or when he got the job going forward. But uh, give him a, a full season uh, next year just to see how he does and see what this OC guy can do. I mean, because we saw it a lot this really in the latter part of the season and even into the playoffs where like these offensive guys were able to do stuff with backups. Like, you know, you look at Cincinnati uh, with Jake Browning and, you know, you look at, you know, Flacco with Stefanski and the way they were able to get him kind of going again. So yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity here for the Titans, but I, I just don't know if he's going to be a culture setter. So 
that's that's my biggest thing. Cool, cool. Uh, good information, guys. Now we're going to move on to the Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders. Former coach Josh McDaniels, new coach Antonio Pierce, officially hired as their head coach. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that, Abe? Um, he he brought some uh, motivation when he took over, um, and and I think this might be something good. Um, I, I know uh, Tom Brady. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert. Tom Brady was trying to get maybe see if Belichick would go there. I don't think it was like a full thing. I think it was like maybe just something talked about. Um, but I mean, I, I, I think overall, I think Brady, you know, just say, yeah, I go with Pierce. I mean, Antonio Pierce, there's nothing wrong with this guy. Um, we'll see what happens. The Raiders need a lot of, they need to do a lot of adjusting. I think also Max Crosby had something to do with that. Cause he also said that, you know, if Antonio Pierce isn't the head coach, then he's, he wants out of uh, Las Vegas. I kind of, I kind of don't like that from a business standpoint because it, you don't, I don't want, like if I was an owner, it was like, I don't want my players running the asylum kind of yeah. thing. Um, and then Max Pro- Crosby is a great player, but I hope that wasn't like an influence in the decision. Hey, like you hey, want to pick. Robert, let, me, let me ask you, Robert, let me ask you. So um, it, this has been even like through the NBA, you hear like LeBron James and then now in the NFL. Um, and you just said it right now that you don't like that from a business standpoint. Like, do you think that that these owners shouldn't or the organizations shouldn't let these like star players determine who the coach should be? I mean, you know, where it's like, well, I want to, you know, I want insight on who should be the head coach or who you should come in or, or the candidates. Like, shouldn't this be from the GM or from the owners that the owner side, like who they think is right instead of the player saying, hey, I want this guy. But what if the owners don't see it that way? What if they see somebody else or they have somebody else in mind? I'm all for the free speech, like say whatever you want to say, but at the end of the day, like it really should come down to the GM, uh, yeah. the owner and the head coach making like a big decision, like, well, like for anything, not just coach, I'm talking like players or, or whatever, like if they want a certain player, like I'm not going to be here if you don't lock up, you know, whatever, Mahomes or whatever, you know, right. I just, I don't want it to be like that. It can be like that in the NBA where the players have more say over the coaches. I don't want right. it to become like that in the NFL because. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, me personally, I don't like that because it shouldn't be like, if I'm your star player, I shouldn't be like, hey, if you don't get this guy, then trade me, you know, like how, like you're not a team player, like that just shows your other teammates, you know, that look up to you because you're the star player. Yeah. And then you have that kind of attitude to where it's like, hey, if you don't get this guy, then I want to be traded. You know, exactly. but that's more of you. I, I feel like that's more of you being like a little bitch, you know, like more like crying. You know, which would you think? You know, would, would oh, you no, say that? One hundred percent. The NFL is more of a, and football is just more of a team sport. So, right. I mean, well, in basketball, you can get away with it because one guy can carry the whole team. So, yes, LeBron right. can say stuff like that, and you know, say whatever he wants to coaches or not listen or or whatever. But in the right. NFL, no, no, it's it's yeah, a more that's it's true. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna play devil's advocate on that, but at the same time, we're seeing it already. Like Max Crosby. He basically and other players for the Raiders were like, if Antonio right, but Pierce then does, let him walk. Then <laughs> let him walk or get traded. Bye bye. Yeah, see, like let him. I don't know, Robert, well, just trying to say like we're seeing the effect already. The well, Raiders were like, you, Fuck no, we're not going to lose Max Crosby. Right, and, what and it could probably like? you could probably get away with it with some teams, but once you go to like a Philadelphia or something like that, like where they have like really good upper management, they're going to be like, okay, cool, walk. You want to do that like in Kansas City? Bye. I don't like it either, but I mean. We're seeing it, and I think it's it's going to be in the unforeseen. No, I, we're seeing it, but it's not going to happen with like the elite yeah. teams. Like that, they're not going to get away with that. Just like uh, I don't, I don't think this falls in the same line of it. But where Nick Chubb said that, you know, he wants um, uh, what's his, what was the quarterback uh, Flacco? Like he uh-huh. goes, I want Flacco back over here. I don't think Chubb said like if he doesn't come back, he doesn't play. You know, but I'm just saying like. You know, I think that should be like the organization's decision on again, that. Again, you're going to see it. You'll see it, but with dysfunctional organizations. Like, no offense, but the Raiders are not a top tier like organization no, like, from not. from upper management. So, yeah, you're going to hear rumblings I like know. that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, I, I was hearing the same thing. You know, with uh, Antonio Pierce, that the players were asking for him to come back. So. Uh, that's why he got the job. So, and he's a good coach, you know. Hey, he did turn the team around towards the end. They were starting to play better for him. So, hey, it worked for Detroit, you know. Yeah. 
All right. We'll so, see. so this. Oh, go ahead, Robert. No, I was gonna say we'll we'll see if it works because the culture thing is one thing, but then, um, I think he played on defense for the Giants. So let's see if he can get his side of the ball right. The thing that Detroit's got in their favor right now is like, yeah, Dan Campbell's like a good like you know, you know, rah rah like get the guys you know, you know, fired up and all that stuff. But yeah, one, like one of the big coach. pieces of them is Ben Johnson being their offensive coordinator. If they lose that guy, that's not the same team offensively. So. We'll see who Antonio Pierce um, hires. I think they're looking at, I think Cliff Kingsbury's an uh, option there for the offensive coordinator, uh, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, guys, do uh, you think Antonio Pierce will have the same success like D'Amico Ryans in Houston this year? If they get the quarterback. <laughs> they don't have the quarterback. There's, there's a difference. Yeah. More, no, no, no. More real of a question. Because I don't think the Raiders organization really were all 100% on Antonio Pierce. Do you see him getting the bounce, the axe, halfway through the season? I, I Look, I'm gonna, I was going to ask you that too, Robert. Good question, Jake. <laughs> I was going to ask you that, Robert. Like if, if, so let's just say – so the players wanted Antonio Pierce, right? But let's just say, hypothetically, they're one in five. Uh, are yep. the players – and now the players are wanting this guy out. Like you think that coaching change happens midseason? I don't think so because you're already putting yourself in a hole anyway because they're in a really tough division and now you got Jim Harbaugh coming in for the Chargers so you can pencil in like the Chiefs and Chargers at the top and then if if Sean Payton somehow figures it out in Denver then it could be a tie there for third and then you're looking at the fourth spot so I'm gonna say no only because of the tough hill that they have to climb all right Good analysis, guys. Let's move on to Robert's team. We have New England Patriots, old yeah. coach Bill Belichick, <laughs> coach, uh, what is it, Jared Mayo? Gerard Mayo. Rod Mayo. Mayo. Uh, classic defensive leader for the Pats. Um, just overall great player. He was there in a bunch of those Super Bowls and came up huge. Locker room leader, culture guy. Um, I think – He's going to set the right tone there and continue the tradition of like, you know, the work hard, do your job kind of thing. I don't think it'll be as military based as Belichick, but he is going to be um, inclusive in that they're, he's going to take ideas from everybody as far as like who to draft and who to look for in free agency. So I'm super excited for the future of the Patriots and they got a super high draft pick. So um, just only up, because they, they could not get any worse than from what it was this past season. It was probably one of the worst seasons I've ever been uh, a New England Patriots fan was this season. So, cool. I'll briefly yeah. talk about it uh, real quick, Abe. I'm not going to say much on this. Uh, but as far as Jared uh, or Gerard Mayo's his little press conference, I have to say it. I got to be the bad guy about it. He had that press conference where he was like, you know, talking the the racial things and oh, just saying, oh my gosh, of the course, whole, whole, of course. I have to go because that's, I mean, he said it, not me, and he just, you know, was saying some, you know, off offsetting things. I won't. Yeah, get but you heard it out of context because that's yeah. what you do. No, no, I mean, you I'm know, not going to say. I don't. I'm just going to say that it made news. I I, I understood yeah. it. Right. Where I, I heard it nowhere yeah. until you brought it up. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm well, not gonna go into pop. Yeah, I don't. I don't... Into... Go ahead, Abe. I'm not going to go into politics here, but I mean, it, it's it's a new era now. I mean these these guys are going to talk about racial stuff like that. I just let it be. I don't let it affect me. Um, it is what it is. Um, but you know, talking about you know going back to football now, talking about Gerard Mayo. This guy was my favorite player coming out of Tennessee. He was a first round pick back in '08 with the with the with the pats and this guy man like when i would see him play he was explosive he's fucking better than micah parsons this guy was the linebacker robert you agree is the because patriots guy, uh yeah. are the patriots your new team for 2024 man <laughs> you know what look ju- look i'm i'm telling you something i'm telling you right now gerard mayo when they made this guy the coach man that was great that couldn't have been that was probably the best day of of, of my week whatever but oh, wow. gerard mayo great player Great player. I'm giving you your props, Robert. Great player. Great player. Cool. Great. You know, this is this is a culture change that the Pats needed to have to have happen. It happened. We're here now. They got the high draft pick. I think they should trade. Um, uh, what's the quarterback? Um, Which one? Not uh, 
Not Zappy. Okay. Um, Mac Jones? Mac, Mac Jones. Jones. I think they should trade him. You could probably get maybe a third. Well, they're drafting a quarterback. That's already been stated. Like in how do you call it? Like he stated the obvious without having to say it. As far as like them, they're going to draft the quarterback. I, cool, I, I say they. I say they trade Mac Jones, and I say they get maybe a third rounder from him and keep Zappy as your backup. Cool. Uh, and then just like again, I got to play the other side. This Mayo guy, okay, he was a player, former player. He's he's good, you know, all that's good. He has no coaching experience. After he left oh, the NFL, he went to go work for like some company or something. Nothing, <clears> of, nothing <throat> of that. Then he came back to the NFL, and now he's a head coach. So y'all, y'all can wait. What are you talking you about? He's been he's been an assistant coach he's, with the Patriots. He's, for... Yeah, he's been with the Patriots oh, since he retired. Oh, I was seeing something or reading something that he was yeah, like, he left for like, like a little bit, but then he came back and he's yeah. been like an assistant and he's been like, been he's worked like different positions. Yeah. It's been in his contract that he was a successor to. Yeah, he's, he's been, been, so. he's been coaching. He's only, he's only 37, man. Do, do your great. research correctly, great. especially on my I, team. I just said he, he worked somewhere else. He said it himself. Yeah, he I did, think. but it was like for like not even that long. And then he was, uh, he was but again, like the linebackers coach. He was the. I'm not. I don't with, know who made him too well. I'm not big on him like you guys are, but I'm going to play the other side of the coin. So if you're going to play the other about. side of it, have the correct research on it. I you're saying he said. had no coaching experience. That's false. Okay, well, that's judging from what I saw and the research <laughs> I gathered, Robert. That wasn't the thing. Anyway, so. Oh, it was. It's. It's, it's like. It's like every, 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 every time. Every time. Every time. Every time Jake, Jake, Every time Jake and Robert fight, it, <laughs> I, I always I always remember of that movie shooter where 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 Danny Glover tells Mark Wahlberg, "I win, you lose." <laughs> I want to get a uh, I want to get Marcos's thoughts real quick just on this hire. Before I'm not gonna play him like you guys are. We got to see what he does. No, you're right, That's it all. does. But you came in with a f- false statement. No, no, I, <laughs> not, not, not to oh, be gosh. honest. For this, for Jared Mayo, I really don't have much to say. You know, this is Palace's territory. You know, I, he knows this guy. I heard, you know, this guy, the culture has been around this guy for a long time. So, you know, this is this is Palace territory. I can't really talk about it. I, if, I, if I put my two cents in, I don't really know much, to be honest, about the Patriots. You don't have to say much, Mark, but you can at least, you know, just have the input. You have to be from the other side. Nah, of the man, I don't, I don't mess with... Palace is Patriots, man. That's all him right there, man. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to just – I as much as we talk about the Cowboys and it's just all me, always the Cowboys, like I'm going to go and say, you know, there's other things to talk about. And I'm That would be like always... me saying – like that would be like if Jason Witten was something with the Cowboys and I came in here saying he has no coaching experience, but he's literally been with the team for like years doing stuff. It's like, what? No, no, I just want to – Coaching high school football so, here so, in Denver. Like, correct me, Robert. Correct me if I'm wrong. So he he was an assistant coach with Belichick recently this year this year not just this year he's been there for a couple of years already doing stuff like okay, well correct me then I guess but I'm telling you what I, <laughs> I, start, I will correct you oh. there is no correct me I guess <laughs> I am gonna correct you okay <laughs> and, and the good thing is and I will say this because I will play the race card and they're doing a culture oh, thing here we go. oh I'm my glad. gosh yeah, he's the first he's the first African American head coach for the Patriots that's an awesome thing is to me he's just, a, he's just a new he's coach. Just a coach. That's just to you though. That's not I'm on the other side of here. <laughs> you try to win back the argument, but it's over. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just saying that mm. also something that's an accomplishment. But anyways, uh let's see. I had the I don't you got I think injuries. Was talking, yeah. There was another that coach. Belichick? Nothing about Belichick. Um, uh, talks have just, uh cooled between him and the Falcons. That's like that was like the last thing. I don't know, man. I, if I were him, I'd probably maybe take a year off or something like that. Maybe another. I mean, the Falcons' job would is sounds enticing. There's good players there, but I don't know. I, I if I were him, I'd wait. Yeah, I, I know Dan. I know Dan Quinn has an interview with the Carolina Panthers or something like that. But I don't think who the hell's going to take that job. It's probably going to be um, the other guy that they're, we're not talking about um, is the OC for the Bucks, Dave Canales. He's been, I think, he's already in his second interview there with Carolina. I can see that possibly happening. Yeah, but I don't know if that guy's a head coach. I mean, he had like 
two good years as an OC for one for Seattle and then this year with the Bucks. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ra- Raheem Morris is also going to interview for that position oh, as well in Carolina. God. Raheem Morris, and then uh, yeah, send him, send then, him uh, over there. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, and then you said Dave Canellis, and then uh, and then yeah, Raheem Morris. Forget that guy. <laughs> All right, guys. Moving on to, I know uh, me and Mark had talked about this off air a little bit. He was letting me know about the we, you know, we could briefly talk about the uh, the twenty twenty four NFL draft order. Mark wanted I to kind of scold him a little bit. <laughs> Hey, this is y'all's thing. Y'all like the college kids coming in the NFL. I'm not I even a college people. guy, but I mean, I, I, I pay attention to what's going on. Even Mark is. Okay, Rob. Uh, yeah, I have like, I have the, what do you want to go over first? The the teams that have the first like top 10 picks, Mark? Yeah, or? let's go ahead and go with the top 10 uh... picks. What teams? Yeah. All right. Yeah, just say the teams in, in the draft. Go from one to 10. All right. So at number one, uh, we have Chicago Bears. Number two, the Washington Commanders. Uh-huh. Three, yeah. New England Patriots. Let's go. Four, Arizona Cardinals. Five, the Los Angeles Chargers. Damn. Six, New York Giants. Seven, Tennessee Titans. Eight, the Atlanta Falcons. Nine, Chicago Bears. Ten, the New York Jets. Damn. So those are the ten teams that are going to be getting the best players from college. So the Bears, do you think they'll go with field, uh, keep Fields, or they're going to move on to Caleb Williams? Hey. Uh, so my insight on that is that the um, the Bears are going to probably trade Caleb, uh, Fields, and it looks like they're going to they're going to draft Caleb Williams, no. and then they're going to and then with that number nine pick, they're going to get that kid. Um, I think it's out of LSU, the receiver. So it should be like a one-two combo. Man, you know what I do? I would take Marvin Harrison Jr. with the number one pick. He's the number one pick on the list that I have. Yeah, um, he's the best player of it. I would take him, and then you can still trade Fields for some picks. But then you have that number nine pick, and you, there's a lot of good quarterbacks coming out. I would there, maybe think well, about Michael Penix yeah. from Washington. They could but I think they're going to go with I think they're going to go with Rome Aduze from Washington. That kid was he's he showed some flashes. As a wide receiver, if they stick with that plan of doing uh, Caleb Williams one, and then at mm. nine they can get that kid out of Washington. Yeah, I mean, either or. But, any, uh, any, anything, anything can happen. Anything can go. Um, yeah. But um, <clears throat> I mean, we'll see. Um, Let's see. Here's you know, a with, here's another situation where like the players are starting to like. Like towards the end, they were speaking out like that they wanted to keep Fields and all that. But at the end of the day, this is a business decision that the Bears have to make, and they can't, you know, rely on the feelings of players. Like they have to do what's best for the organization. Yeah, I, I think I, 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 I have to, I have to uh, look over this list again. I'm seeing. So wait, correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the Bears have two first round picks, or they go twice? Yes, yes, because ah, they got the, their first. Their first pick is actually Carolina's pick, but they traded it, so that's why the Bears have it. If not, they would oh, originally yeah. just that that number one pick would have been Carolina's, but that's not what's happening this upcoming draft. If if they if they if this draft happens the way it, it they say it might happen, where it's it's the one two uh, or it's that Caleb Williams and and a Zun, a Zuni guy. Uh-huh. That could be equivalent to like your Burrow and Jamar Chase. Oh, okay. So, so I mean, it, you know, but like I'm saying, like like I said, I mean, they with the Bears and the rest of the draft, they if if they, okay, so if the Bears do the quarterback Caleb Williams and then they do the receiver at nine, after that you got to bulk up that offensive line. So I think right. you should do. I think you should go and draft offense, 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 and then maybe towards the end, maybe you get a couple of defensive guys that might contribute not be star players but can contribute as well yeah. on the defensive side and real quick robert are we going to go over the, the like the, the teams in order or do you want to just do you want to swap to the, the second pick real quick i mean we can just go over a couple teams we don't really have to tackle all of them i mean i mean go to the next team who do they what do they need what's the next team Washington. Commanders. commanders they're going to get a quarterback and quarterback. let's say Let's play. Hypo- let's play hypothetical. Like the Bears take Caleb Williams. You got Drake May. You got Jaden Daniels. 
you got Michael Penix, you got Bo Nix. Uh, there's like a whole slew of, of quarterbacks that they can take. And that, that for sure, they need a quarterback. Like there's no other position top right now that they need. Well, they got the Pats taking uh, Jaden Williams or Jaden Daniels. I mean, yeah. at number three, that, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, I was gonna say Patriots next. So you if you can, taking... if you can go, Robert, if you can go and draft Jaden Daniels and then trade for Stephon, I mean, uh, yeah, for Diggs in Buffalo, Robert. I don't know if I want Diggs. I don't know if I want that attitude because he he's hot and cold. Like he's a great player, but I want guys that are gonna be all in. So I'd rather trade for like a. I'd rather have like a T Higgins. And then, like, yeah, a he's, gonna be a free, he's gonna be a free agent. And Gerard Mayo did say that they're gonna spend money, like, they're ready to open up that checkbook for free agency. So, the Pats are gonna be spending. So, that quarterback's gonna have weapons. All right, real and then, quick, uh, guys, real, real quick. So, Arizona, they're, 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 they're having to pick Marvin Harrison Jr. Robert, do you like this? Do you like this for Arizona? Do you like this for Kyla Murray? I mean, Hey man, I like entertainment in my NFL. I don't want teams like I want exciting games. Kyler Murray with that Marvin Harrison guy that that would make for some good TV. So I uh, I'm interested. I don't hate it. Would I prefer he'd go to like the Patriots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Now, I, now I okay, but would would you would you be upset if the Patriots don't pick a quarterback and they get this kid? Harrison no, because Jr. then they, there's there's going to be free agents out there. The, the, there's, I mean, anything can happen. I, I, this is going to be one of the most craziest off seasons in the NFL. Uh, and I know we say that all the time, but I think this year it's going to ring true. Kirk Cousins to the Pats? Nah. <laughs> nah they're going to go the youth movement. All right. Uh, moving on to, it looks like, number five, Los Angeles Chargers. Notable free agents, Austin Eckler. They'll sign him. They'll sign him. Um, they're, they're, it looks like they're going to get that Brock Bowers from Georgia. Great pickup as a tight end. Reminds me of Antonio Gates, and that's what they need for Herbert. Yeah, they're not going to get – they have Herbert. There's no need to get a quarterback, of course. Uh, no, they're not going to get – no, I'm saying this would be a good weapon for Herbert. They need a tight end yeah. because they're other they tight could, uh, They could also – they could also trade down if they don't want to get him because their their team is pretty stacked on the offensive side of the ball. They could trade down, get some more picks, and then pick up some. You know, there's a lot of receivers coming out also that you can pick in the middle of the round. So that's they also could, another can... that's also another opportunity. Like if I were the Falcons, I would trade up to five and get one of those quarterbacks. Yeah, because what what uh Jake? What number are the Falcons drafting? Eight. Eight. See, I would move up, move up and get a quarterback, and then the Chargers are still in good position to get like a, a good skill player. Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to, you'd have to, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to jump up to five because at six, the Giants, they, they're going to take uh, Malik Neighbor. Well, he's a receiver, so no. Yeah, you could jump up to five and get, who is it? Uh, they could get Bo Nix. They could get Bo Nix, uh, yeah. Michael Penix if his stock rises. I think he's going to be really good in the in the NFL. Speaking of the Giants, Abe, so, I mean, uh, Danny Dimes done, and they're going to try and get a quarterback, or Danny Dimes done? Nah, it, looks like, it looks like they're going to go after Malik Neighbors out of LSU, explosive wide receiver. Um, this, this guy, he's, he's going to probably be equivalent to your Victor Cruz back in the day. So um, I, think gonna, I think they're going to stick with, with Danny Dimes. Give him another year and see what happens. And the then, fact uh, that y'all call him that is pathetic, both of you. So, <laughs> That's well, amazing. we'll see. I think I think we'll, neighbors we'll just... neighbors might help him out, and of course he might burn Duran Bland. So I like this neighbors kid going to New York. Cool. Uh, moving on to the Tennessee Titans. This is where it gets interesting because the notable free agents Tannehill, Derrick Henry. What do they do? What do the Titans do, Robert? They're going offense. Yeah, they need a they need a, a a good number one for Levis. Mark, well, yeah. they have a lineman getting a, a tackle or something to protect yeah. Levis. That too. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Joe Alt. 
the Falcons, where what what happens with the Falcons, especially if Belichick goes? What do you think they're doing? They're gonna go they linebacker a, from Bama. No, they need a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, but they're gonna go linebacker Dallas Turner. No, they're not. They're gonna get a quarterback. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're mean? going quarterback. Who are they? Who are they gonna get a quarterback then if they don't if they if they don't go with a quarterback in the first round? I don't know. No, that's like what they're missing. They have the running back, Bijan Robinson. They have Kyle Pitts. They need the quarterback. <laughs> and I think they know they know Bo Nix is capable of being a quarterback, I guess. But Bo Nix? Ooh. You don't like him going to Denver? No, well, Atlanta. That we're talking about. Or him. if if the Falcons find a way to get a Justin Fields off a trade and get some yeah. give up some draft capital and that could help out the Bears. And then I guess just the last team, guys, at, at number 10, we'll talk about and then move on from the draft. Interesting. The New York Jets. We got Rodgers. Offensive coming lineman, offensive, offensive lineman, line, left tackle. Offense. Line. Offense. <laughs> yeah. What, what, were, what were you thinking, Jake? Uh, uh, a linebacker? <laughs> QB? Uh, no, nah, their defense is pretty good. The Jets. Uh, uh, <laughs> the line, that's literally the only answer. Uh, uh, Robert, Jake, Jake is, uh, hey, is, is Jake, Jake's like, is Curtis Martin still the running back for the Jets? I, I watched it more than the Cowboys beat the Melbourne Jets. Uh, it's no, definitely we have a line. Line. running back. Is they can do that? no, we got a good running back. No, running you don't back draft the have... running back in the first round. No, we learned that from lesson from Zeke. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Jaco's like, is Wayne Corbett still the slot receiver for the Jets? And we got him for five years, and so it's <laughs> not good for a running back. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, guys. We'll move on from the draft over. Good little analysis of the drafts. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk more draft later. This oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. That'll be that'll be probably the kickoff to our uh, season two. It'll either be – I, what, I forgot the, what, I com- the, what no. comes first, the draft or the schedule? The draft and then it's a schedule. We do a we do a draft pod and then we do the schedule in May. The schedule right. that'll 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 be the season two start of it. That's when we plan our trips or yes. our, our Tampa trip. That's true. I mean Dallas trip. Dallas, Dallas trip to see Tampa. To see Tampa. Baker. Which 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 reminds me real quick, Robert. I I got to get my Columbia shirt for Tampa. I'm going to wear that over there in Dallas. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll move on to last week's games, the divisional round, right, Robert? Some yes, sir. Games. Where do you want to start? Or do you want to go uh, in we'll... order that they were played? Uh, yeah, we can do that, Robert. Kick us off. Um, I mean, Baltimore, man, was just completely dominant. Uh, they they are what they are, man. They're the best team right now in the league and the, probably the favorite right now to win it all, to be honest. Um <laughs> Really, not not much more they can say. They they completely dominated over the Texans, who were a little overwhelmed and kind of out of their element. But you know they got a huge future ahead of them with with CJ Stroud and that coach. And once they draft, you know, and develop these players more, like once they get like their guys back, like they didn't have Tank Dell, who was a great weapon for CJ Stroud. So let's see what they do in the draft. So I mean, it's not like oh man, this was horrible for the Texans. Um, this is just they keep their chin up. They had a great showing. Go cool, ape. What did you think of the uh, Texans versus Ravens game? Man, I, I really, you know, with Lamar kind of uh, being a little cocky on his press conference and all that, I was like, man, I think CJ Stroud's going to go in there and sucker punch him in the mouth and just upset them, and and it would be great because you know Houston. I mean, this was another team where they had nothing to lose, you know, nobody expected them to be where they were at, you know? Um, so this would have been great, but like Robert said, Baltimore, they are just dominant, man. Like they, you know, I think this year they are just strong or stronger. So, uh, you know, it, it's hard, man. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I think next year, you know, the Texans are going to do a little better. I was, uh, I was hoping they would win. You know, my uncle was so excited to come back on the show, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna come on, and I'm ready." 
<laughs> he didn't, I didn't hear. I didn't hear from him the rest of the day. It's an <laughs> APB. Lost. Put on an APB for Ray. Yeah. Oh, oh, boy. oh man. But but maybe we'll get him on again. But anyway, um, yeah, this was a great win. Um, <clears throat> I think if there's anybody that could take out Mahomes, Lamar, agree, Robert. I never thought I would say this. I like rooting so hard for Lamar this weekend, and if oh. he doesn't get it done. I don't want to hear hey. about Lamar Jackson and the Ravens ever again. Yeah, and you know what? And you know who else is going to happen and, and help? My boy Clowney is going to come in there, and he's going to bring some pressure. The enemy of so, my enemy is my friend. There you go. There you go. And and and, and he brought it against the Texans. Huh? He had a couple of hurries. Sure. Anyway. Cool. Anyway, so. Uh, Mark, uh, Mark how, how, do you, how do you feel about the game, Mark? I know we have some friends. We have family that are uh, you know, Texans fans. I always say. There's only one Texas team, and that's the fucking Cowboys. For all my Cowboys fellow fans out there, because I have haters that hate on me for being a Cowboys fan, so I'm gonna hate on the CJ Stroud. Stroud's better than Dak. You're the one that you're the way. Hang on, real quick. No, 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 no. No, because I'm gonna I'm gonna let him go. But uh, can I just say this real quick? Because you always give shit like, oh, like if you're from Texas, you got to cheer on your Texas teams. Like you're telling me you wouldn't cheer on the Mavericks if they were in the finals. We're not talking NBA. Uh, but, talking- nah, but, but I'm just giving you an example. In, in, People still watch know. NBA? And I'm, I'm, saying, not, I'm, I'm just Mavericks saying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for Marcos Mavericks here fan. as far as like being a Mavericks fan. They're a Texas a team. Fan. No? It's totally different. Yeah, that's, We're talking- to- that's what I thought. Caught you. Anyway, you're trying to Cut get dry. Uh, <laughs> nah. Yeah. Nah, to be honest, I was more <laughs> impressed with you. Can you hear me? But, uh. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I don't have much to say, but uh, I'm gonna. You didn't let you know, let let Marco hey, talk. Let Marco talk. Love, uh, I was gonna say, I want Mark. I want it because I see Mark like going, like he was going at it. What Mark? How did you feel about the game? Okay, so yeah, CJ Stroud, you know, he had him in there for like three quarters, you know, and then Lamar Jackson, they couldn't just stop him from rushing, you know, rushing down the middle, getting that touchdown, long long touchdown towards the end, you know, that was impressive. But you know, he was going blow to blow with. With with the Ravens for a while, but it was, they were just too much for him. So, but hey, man, they have a good future with CJ Stroud going in, man. So, uh, I'll be scared. Yeah, they they uh, based on the stats that I'm looking at, they kept up with them for one half. The second half, zero zero points, third and fourth. So, Texans didn't do nothing. The second half, everybody was high on CJ Stroud going into this game, and they, as they the still point. as they still should be. Hold on, no, Robert. At rookie quarterback, first a playoff appearance. Everybody thought he was going to do something extraordinary. No, uh, sorry, it didn't happen. Jordan, I Love mean, weir- weirder, weirder things have happened in the NFL. Nobody thought a team would go into their own stadium and win the Super Bowl, and Tom Brady did it. So I'm just saying, things oh, happen I'm, in this I'm, league. And I'm giving props to last week. Jordan Love, rookie, beat the Cowboys. That's fucking terrible. It's just terrible. But, no, but I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a bad thing for CJ Stroud, like. And he was mad about losing too, so that just goes to show you he's he wasn't just happy to be there. Of course, but they again they got utter destruction. Uh, it was bad, thirty four to ten, exposed. Now, right? I want to say exposed, but they got utter um, But yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, what's gotta, the next thing? Got to stick it to that Houston team, right? Because it's not Dallas. That's right. You're pathetic. What was the next game, Robert? Uh, the Packers and the 49ers, uh, good fun game. Um, Green Bay totally dominated that game. I, I'll call it like I see it. Um, you know, Jordan Love just played with – that whole team played with, like, no fear, man. Like, house money. Um, they weren't supposed to be there. The, the number seven seed. Uh, you know, they, they and then, of course, they're, they're still young, so they, they made a crucial mistake at the end, and – you know, to beat a team like the 49ers, you got to play 60 minutes. As Tom Brady says, you play till that clock hit zero. And, you know, Brock Purdy, who didn't play well most of that game, but made a drive at the end and got them the win. Marcos, what did you think about the game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wasn't expecting, you know, the Packers to be dominating most of the game, you know, and then. Towards the end, you know, the 49ers, you know, they just clicked and everything and just came back and won it. But, you know, 
Jordan Love, you, you could tell he was behind uh, Aaron Rodgers for a couple of those passes, side on yeah. throws, falling backwards. You know, like what is yeah. he doing? He played recklessly, but hey, you know if that wits for him. You know that works. It's almost but, hey, like that's the Green Bay way. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like that that their their wild card victory wasn't some fluke. Like this team's gonna be around. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Hey, I was going to those guys due to a severe case of flu and COVID, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Jordan Love balled out. I'll say that. Wait, what did you say? Uh, Go back real quick. What? What did you say? Severe I case of flu. I wasn't what? on last week's show to talk about that game, but because I oh. had a severe case of flu or COVID, I don't know. Oh, okay. What <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you did show up on the injury report again. <laughs> hey, um... how, how did you feel about the game, babe? Uh, I mean, Brock Brock Purdy was uh, his, he was off on his targets. The defense on the Niners side was giving up big plays. Um, it, like I, I've told you this before, even when we had that that piece of shit little Steven on here, where I said that <laughs> when you get it, when you get a healthy Aaron Jones, that motherfucker will run you up, man. He will run all over you, and that's what he did, um, and that's what kept the Green Bay Packers in the game, along with with Jordan Love making the throws that he was doing that he was throwing. Um, this this is a young team, like Robert said. There's going to be more to come this year. They have the draft. They have free agency as well. See what they do. And, and Jordan Love played it. Get... He played himself into a contract. That's the best thing. Yeah. Oh think. yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Remember, Robert? They didn't want. They didn't want to keep this kid, Jordan no, Love. Like there was by... like some. There was there was at times where they didn't. They were like, "Hey, this isn't our guy." And then look now. Yeah, like October, like late October, like they weren't even sure <clears> if that <throat> was going to be the guy, and he yep. turned it around. Yeah, he did. I mean, he it 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 lit a spark on his ass. But oh shit, that piece of shit Dak didn't do shit anyway. Um, Jordan <laughs> anyway. Love is a way Jordan Love is a way better quarterback than Dak Prescott, and he's going to only get better. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, on that, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the San Francisco side. Uh, you know, Brock had 252 yards. Uh, I want to say McCaffrey was the MVP of the game from what I watched. Put two touchdowns. He was running all over Green Bay. Uh, you know, you got Kittle in there with the touchdown. And that's what I don't know if he was running all over them. I mean, he got a touchdown, but it wasn't like he was. It wasn't. Uh, he, yeah. It wasn't like he was as dominant as as you know. If you're if you're watching with your eyes, like they kind of kept kept him contained for a while. Yeah, they did. Ten uh, yards less than uh, Jones, so it was a, it was about like the same, give or take, I guess. But he still got how the many how many yards did Jones have? One hundred eight. One hundred eight. Yeah. Yeah. So he but had ten last ninety eight. That's what I said. But yeah. On, but on 18 so he had 98, but that was dominance. Okay. Well, he scored two touchdowns, Robert. So <laughs> he, he did it when it mattered. 98 <laughs> yards. Okay. You know, you know who was kind of absent from the game, though? Uh, Abe, uh, who I like, the receiver, uh, Ayuk. Ayuk? Kind of yeah. They, they, as, soon as, as soon as Debo Samuel got out of the game, that's when they were doubling up and tripling up on Ayuk. Uh, oh. and, they, and they also, they also took – Kittle's out of the equation too, so Brock Purdy really couldn't, you know. I mean, Kittle had that touchdown, but other than that, I mean, he wasn't really as open as he usually is because they were they were you know taking him out and then they took Ayuk out, which was also good from the Green Bay's defensive side. Uh, that Jair Alexander, man, that guy is a freaking beast. I wish the Cowboys would get him, um, but that guy, yeah, he he he's a he's a lockdown corner. And real quick, just shout out to little Steven. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, man. Jordan Love doesn't throw that pick at the very end. They get in the field goal range, tie the game. Yeah. I'll... Hey, guys, guys, real quick. If, if Let's just say that, that Love didn't throw that pick, and let's just say maybe they scored a touchdown because there was still about a, a buck 30 left in this game. Um, you know, if they take out the number one seed, Robert, they go to the Super Bowl. You guys have them locked in the Super Bowl? Um, I said, I, had it uh, I said it on Facebook. I'm not confident enough to say that. No, they have to go well, I mean, they, they take out they, they they take out the number two seed and the shit ass Cowboys, and then they take out the Niners. So they take out the number two and the number one seed. You guys don't have them locked as going to the Super Bowl. You don't think they would take out the Lions? Mark? No, because I think the Lions. I, I think their offense is a bit more dynamic and can control the clock um and then if they had run into tampa bay we saw what they did to them um yeah. so i wouldn't have called it a lock 
All right. Fair enough. Mark, what do you what do you think? But we already talked about this. <laughs> no, if they would have scored the touchdown. If they would have scored the touchdown, Abe was asking. Oh. Um we're just playing with too many of the what ifs. Uh, yeah. it, was, it is what it is, you know. It, they were close, it didn't happen. So I'm not gonna be playing the what ifs because we can go a bunch of different directions. First quarter, they missed the four, fourth and one when they were close to scoring type of stuff. So there's a lot of what ifs, and so I don't play that. It happened. All right, Robert, and take us into my favorite game. Of Which last was that? Kansas City oh. Bills. Um, oh. um, y'all can speak on this one. I was actually filming my movie Sunday night, so I didn't okay. get to see this game at all. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and go first because I I don't this. This was uh, I, I can't stand that it's Taylor Swift smoke, like Robert lady. So they keep showing her all the time. Who gives a fuck how she celebrates a touchdown or whatever? I don't <laughs> give a shit. Um, this was a good game though. I will say, um, that real quick, Robert, the uh, the guy, the kicker Bass, mm-hmm. was getting a whole bunch of. He had to delete his social media because he was getting death threats. Mm-hmm. Um, this- because of from the Bills mafia. So I mean, his teammates kind of stuck up. Um, for him and and they were just like, hey man, he was kicking into the wind. What do you expect? So, yeah, but... um, you know, here, he, I mean, you're not going to be accurate all the time. I mean, there's going to be shit where you miss or something like that. But still, this was a good game. But you know what? This was also again on Allen not making the plays, oh, not making oh. the throws. And is I think it or was it for that? Or from like what I read and what I heard was oh, that like they try to put it too much on his shoulders again, rather than what they had been doing that got him on a hot streak, which was run yeah. the ball, um, you know, get other players involved. But I mean, he, I, I think this goes on, on, on Josh Allen, not making the plays because, you know, I would have gone for it fourth and nine. Well, that's, isn't that a coaching thing? Not him. That is a coaching thing, but still at the same time, I mean, Allen, I mean, he was running the ball. And then for some reason, he didn't even want to – like, he didn't run. He could have ran, I think, and got at least, you know, I don't know, maybe like another five yards. Maybe move the, the field goal up a little bit more. Yeah. Nah, about the game? Nah, nah, it was a good game, man. They, they were blow to blows. You know, I was rooting for the Bills to win this. Don't want to see another Kansas City Super Bowl. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, no more homies here. Um, I don't. It's not yeah, like I care about frog. Taylor Swift. I don't believe it. I don't care about that. Um, I think Travis Ke- Travis Kelsey is getting it. old. So yeah. like, but hey, they they came up with the win. They they scored Pacheco. Can, they really can, that guy likes to run really hard. If you ever seen him run, he looks like he's beating the floor. So yeah, I think the Kansas City winning. I think the Bills lost it more than Kansas City won it. There we go. Um, I don't agree with that, but that's fine. That's fine. But what's <laughs> what's your what's your counter? You can't my just say that is, without having a counter. My, count, my counter is basically what Abe said that Allen didn't play, that it did fall on him, and that Mahomes, of course, Mahomes outplayed him, and basically did what he needed to do to win the game. So, ba- well, but basically, you're proving Marcos's point right because you said. Josh Allen didn't do his part, which means it was the Bills losing it more than Kansas City winning it. No, because I just said Mahomes outplayed Allen. You you can hate Mahomes all you want, Robert. I don't hate him because, remember, it was you motherfuckers who (laughs) gave me shit when I put him number one on my top QBs list when we did this, like, months ago. So I don't want to hear it. (laughs) You do that that because you know in the end they're going to make it to the end. That's why. No. But I can call stuff for – I can be unbiased unlike you. How am I being unbiased about the Chiefs? They they are the best team, man. Like they're gonna they're gonna because beat I have Kelsey. eyes. They have the best quarterback, but not the best team. There you go, and Jake. I've been thinking about Lamar because Lamar was playing outstanding. So he has been, yeah. Um, you can have the yeah. best quarterback, but not the best team. Again, but give credit to the Chiefs. Abe kind of did a little bit. I mean, they went to Buffalo. They won. Beat, what do you want? Like they have it in bad weather conditions. Of course, they earned the fucking win. So they did. Gonna... They earned. They oh. played good. They didn't have drops like I was pre- predicting they would, and they got the job done. But it's, yeah. they still got to play one more game. And that and that, folks, leads us into 
this next week games of the conference championship games, Robert. Motherfucker, we didn't talk about Tampa and Detroit yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot about uh, huh? those. Huh? The, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team that made it farther than the Dallas Cowboys. So please, <laughs> let's talk about them for a little bit. Okay. Show some yeah. respect. Shit, shitty division, and they easily got in. Uh, and then... Yeah, and they easily had the best playoff game of the of the weekend. Okay. Eagles choked as well. They're just. Did you shit. watch? Did you watch the Tampa Bay game? Uh, I got mm. to see it. No, I didn't actually. Nah, of course you did. Why wouldn't you? Because then you would have yeah. known it was the best game of the weekend. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk Bucks and Lions. When Baker Mayfield played well in that game. He actually showed me up that he's a good quarterback for that team. Well, the Rocky never so, said he was a bad quarterback. I just don't think he's that great. Stop talking over our guest. <laughs> but I, golf oh, because man. he didn't talk over me or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, but golf is showing up there. He's he's a good quarterback. He wasn't even he was like not even part of the main deal for to get him into the team, and now he's leading the team into possibly going to the Super Bowl and they could beat the 49ers, which yeah, I'll discuss that later. Yeah, for me it was one of those situations like I love the Bucks. Obviously, I wanted them to win, but it wasn't like I wasn't like mad afterwards because the Lions is a fun story. Um, for that city and you know they've been waiting like a long long time uh, for something like this so I mean you could you can't help but like feel I feel good for like that fan base um, it was a, it was a fun game that's all I could ask for right for the Bucks making it as far as they did um, did they have a chance to to win yeah there were some missed opportunities they could have gotten it done um, but unfortunately the, you know this team was limited in some spots and Detroit was able to make the plays where they needed to, and that's it is what it is. Congrats to them, Abe. Yeah, I think this was a good game. Uh, I think the two picks that Baker threw kind of hurt him a little bit, but um, yeah. it was a good game. Um, I, I, I think you know, um, I think it was too much of the lines. I think Jared Goff is Jared. He is that guy. He's good. Um, so I mean, you know, I, I, it almost was was a tie. I mean, I, I know the Bucks were driving towards the end, and then that, that's when Baker did that uh, yeah. that pick. Um, other than that, I thought it was a good game, and and uh, I mean, let's see what happens in the off season with the Bucks. You know, with Evans, and then with with Mayfield, see what happens there. Um, the other thing was, what was I going to say? Nah, I forgot. I forgot <laughs> what, what point I was going to make. Oh man, uh, Mike Evans to Tampa to a New England. I mean, I wouldn't be mad. It's, it, just, it works out for me. I don't know about the rest of you all. It works out fine for me. Nah, I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen. I know he wants to stay a buck and all that. And him and Baker had a good connection. Got him over a thousand yards again, which nobody thought that was gonna happen. So that kept Mike uh, Mike Evans' streak alive. Um, he's got a Super Bowl, and he's gonna go into the Hall of Fame. I think he wants to finish his career in Tampa. So hopefully, they get it done. We'll see. Okay. So now can we move on to uh, conference championships, Rob? Yes, Jake. All right. So with the first game, Robert, do you have the lineup to show the uh, times? Um, so the AFC is going to be going first. Uh, I think they play like a 230, something like that. Um, it's the Baltimore Ravens hosting – the Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore, the first time hosting an AFC championship game. I think this is the first time since, I think in the, the 70s or something like that. But this is also the first AFC championship game that doesn't have Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, or Patrick Mahomes like hosting. Like that's how dominant, like uh, m- mostly P- Peyton and Brady. But um, yeah, it's the first time it's not going to be held in one of those stadiums. Who wants to start us off on this game? Abe. Yeah, this is going to be a good game. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, man, like if he's if he's, I mean, I, I, I'm sure he's going to play. I know he's a little banged up, but I'm sure he's going to play. Um, this is going to be a, a, not a. I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game. Um, I think it might be kind of like a low scoring type of game. But um, I'm going to go with the Ravens here. The Ravens oh. are at home. It, it's hard. It, it's, a, it's a hard stadium to play at, M&T Bank Stadium. Um, I like Lamar. Lamar, I think, is is a little bit 
I think he's better than than Mahomes, and it's going to be too much. I think it's too much for the Chiefs. I'm going to go with the Ravens here. Okay, I respect that pick. Uh, Mark, what you, who you got? Well, I got to keep with my Super Bowl prediction <laughs> from the past, so I picked <laughs> the Ravens versus Cowboys, so I keep in my narrative. So, yeah, the the Ravens, you know, they have a good team. You know, the way they're playing on offense, they're just dominating on the ball, running, throwing. Those, those receivers are likely is doing an amazing job in there, man. It's, I feel like they have glue in their hands because they just throw the ball and they're catching everything that Lamar is giving them. So if they could keep up that type of play, I'm pretty sure they have a better chance than any of the other teams. All right. Uh, so I guess I'm the oddball out, right? I'm the only one picking the Chiefs to win. I don't know. You haven't gotten my analysis. You haven't asked me what I think oh, of this game. <laughs> go ahead, Robert. I was going to go uh, next, but okay, go ahead. Um, if there was a year for Lamar to win the Super Bowl, this is it. You have no Joe Burrow. This is the weakest Mahomes team that there has been since he's played in the league. So he's pretty much reeling right now. So this is like the perfect time to get him the best receiving core that Lamar's had in his career. Um, defense that we always know is, is excellent always for the Baltimore Ravens. John Harbaugh is not going to let this team fall off. Like this is like, if you can't get it done this year, then I don't want to hear about you all ever again. So I've never been a Lamar Jackson guy. I've never, I I hate the Ravens just based on our rivalry with the Patriots. They always had our number. In, in a lot of these spots so you know that just goes to show like how much i don't want the chiefs in the super bowl again the the nauseating coverage that there would be um uh, if they make the super bowl again and plus they're already they're already starting again there was i think a sec i didn't watch it but i just saw like the graphic there was a segment on first take saying this is is uh tom brady's goat status in danger already it's like please can we not like can we not Baltimore, 23, Kansas City, 20. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, so they're all picking folks, uh, the Ravens. Now I'm going to have my case for the Chiefs. Again, I've already said this so many times in the regular season podcast. Mahomes is a Super Bowl reigning champ. That's number one. Number two, Kelsey's still there. He's going to perform. How do we know that? Based on what? Because he had one good game last year, finally. Last week, based on uh, Swift being in the stands, no, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! This is your That's chance, Jake. Outshine us with analysis, Jake. Come on, let's do it. I was joking about that, but anyway, Robert. Uh, no, because yeah. Kelsey always performs, man. So it'll he be always fun. performs. He's been bad the whole season. Yeah. He scored two touchdowns last game, Robert. Anyway. Yeah, one game that he was good. He has not been consistent. Those who were uh, anyway, yeah, and then like I was going into Pacheco. Pacheco is going to run. Hopefully, all over that Baltimore defense and show that he's actually an elite running back. He's not just some running back that's an okay running back, Robert. Uh, and then the, the fourth thing I'm going to say is that I think this Chiefs defense turns it up a notch, and they're not going to allow Lamar uh, just to just run in there like he did. Uh, yeah, just like he did, and just got into the end zone. That's not going to happen. I don't think this. Oh game my is. gosh. I'm that sorry, guy's Abe. fast. Have you been seeing Lamar run, man? Yeah. Like when he runs up down the I middle, like <laughs> before someone <laughs> tells quarterback, Mark, of course. But I think the Chiefs would turn it on if they really want to win. Key to victory is stopping him, and they have to turn up their defense. Mahomes will do his part. Robert knows. Robert knows. We don't know. <laughs> oh, stop it! Not this year. Oh. Not a guarantee. So that's that's my pick for that. I I got the Chiefs. Uh, as, what's the score? Come on, know. come on, coward. Score, uh, I do 27 21. Okay, um, you guys didn't give scores. Do you all want to give scores since this is we're only covering two games today? Do you want do you have a prediction on score? Abe, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, uh, Ravens, um. 20 and Kansas City 13. Nah, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. So I expect like a 36 27 Ravens. Ooh, I, like it. I would like it if it's high scoring. Don't be boring. Yeah, that's a good score. Nah. Okay. It'd be, great if, it'd be great if Taylor Swift wasn't there. 
<laughs> She's got to support her, her, her move. All right. Are we ready for the NFC Championship game? Yep. Go ahead. Ooh, All right. Yes. It's going to be uh, the San Francisco 49ers led by Brock Purdy hosting the Detroit Lions in the Cinderella story. Uh, probably the one everyone's rooting for for the most part in America. Uh, the Detroit Lions led by Jared Goff. Who wants yeah. to kick us off? The Mark. uh Marcos. So, yeah, so the 49ers, the way they were playing last Sunday, they look like they can be beat. Possibly, you know, they exposed them, like Jake likes to say, that they got exposed. <laughs> and Detroit can actually do something to stop Purdy. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is still going to do his thing. He's probably still going to rush his two touchdowns. <clears throat> There's no stopping that. He is who he is, but stopping all the other weapons is probably the best way to stop them. Uh, Purdy trying to pass it to anybody would, would probably be their, their weakness to them. I do have the Detroit Lions coming up with the upset, going for the Cinderella story yeah. here, just because I, I like Dan Campbell. Yeah. You know, hey, great Y'all coach. I, I, I want to say he's a coach of the year, man, because the way the team – has rallied behind him. He um, might win it, to be honest. So, and that's why I have the Lions win because I, I like that Campbell. I like that whole story. Do you or, have a Do you have a score prediction? Twenty to ten. Twenty to ten. <laughs> Defense. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, Abe. Since I saw you were so excited over there, go ahead, Abe. Yeah. So, so I'm going to reference. One of my favorite movies from the '80s, Predator, where where the lady goes, I he was there was blood, and Arnold goes, well, if it bleeds, we can kill it. That's the 49ers right there because you saw them last week where they couldn't do shit for a little while, and Green Bay had them on the heels, and then it, also on the 49ers, I don't know if you saw the meme on from from uh, Friday after next or next Friday where he goes, man, them motherfuckers had me scared. That was the Bills. That was the that was the Diners being like that with the Packers. So I expect the same thing again on this go around. Too much of the Lions offense. Aiden Hutchinson's going to bring the pressure. I think Amron St. Brown's going to have a great game. You've got the two-headed running backs of Montgomery and Jair Gibbs or Jameer Gibbs. Uh, Laporta's there. He's healthy. So that's a lot of weapons already right there for um, Jared Goff. I think this is going to be a Great game, but I think the Lions are going to come out on top. The Lions are going to go to the Super Bowl. Dan Campbell is great. Lions, 34, San Fran, uh, 14. Huh. All right. I'll, I'll go real quick, Robert, if I can. Uh, I got I got the 49ers winning this game. Uh, oh, the, my gosh, dude. Actually. It's going to be if Debo Samuel plays, they win this no, game. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't, no, you don't get to do that where it's like if Debo Samuel gets to play or if he doesn't play, no, motherfucker. Give your freaking predictions on the current team as of now. Like, don't, if, if oh, it's in, whatever. No, because okay. he's going to play more than likely. But anyway, let's say he doesn't play. The 49ers, they're going to win because Brock is going to have, I think, a better game than Jared Goff. He'll throw to Kittle. He'll get Ayuk involved. Uh, more, especially if Debo doesn't play. McCaffrey, like Mark said, he's going to have his field day. The Lions, the Lions have Sauls or Gardner or on the defensive side. If the if the Packers can lock up Ayuk, then the Lions have the same players that can lock up Ayuk okay. as well. You heard your analysis. That this is my analysis. That's pretty much where I'm going with that. That's that's what's going to matter. As far as Detroit, okay. If Goff outplays Purdy, then they win. They have that that receiver, St. Brown. Yes, it's good. Uh, Montgomery. Good uh, but I, I don't think – I don't know if Detroit's defense will be as good as the 49ers' defense. I mean, we have uh, to wait well, obviously, you only watch the Cowboys as usual. So, you, if you would watch other games, you would see that the Lions have a stout defense. I, no, that's not what I said. I said I don't know if they're going to be better than the 49ers' defense, Abe. That's what I was saying. Oh, we'll have to wait and see. Good. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I got the 49ers winning this game. They're not, they're, they're no chumps. They, they are the number one seed for a reason. Uh, 24-21, close game. They win by a field goal. Robert? Um, 
<laughs> 49ers played terrible last weekend. Um, and I think if that was, that was the game to get them, you should have gotten them there. Um, any other team, I think if it was a little bit more veteran, they would have taken care of the Niners and put them away. Um, they're going to play. That's the worst they're going to play, I think, going forward. So the, this Lions team is going to be around. Like they're going to, they, they got something going there. Yeah, but I think it's not time just yet. No, um, not, dude. Fuck, fuck I'm gonna not, dude. I'm gonna it's stick it's with it's the 49ers narrative. because I've said they've been the best team in the <laughs> NFC all season long, and they haven't shown that yet. But I think we're gonna see it um, on Sunday. And I, <laughs> regardless of whether Debo plays or not, I think the, the 49ers are all around are just gonna play better. Um, because they know that their window is probably going to close soon. So um, this is the year for them to get it done. So, and for some reason, I, even though I picked Baltimore, I think we're going to end up with my Super Bowl pick, oh, man, get the- which is, which is Chiefs <laughs> Niners. I just have this ugly feeling, even though I don't want it to happen, not because of Jake's stupid, like, oh, because you know, my homie's good. No, it's just because I just fucking think. Well, that was your pick something- originally. So I'll give you that. Yeah, that but you didn't you didn't hear my reason why I picked it because I thought for some reason the refs will have help them get in there. Aww. There'll be a call in some in that game that's gonna help benefit Kansas City. And for some reason that's how they'll get into the Super Bowl. Um you know, CBS will love it, obviously, right? Because for cause aid, because of the Taylor Swift thing. Oh my um, fucking star gosh. power. I mean that 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 would be the NFL's like greatest thing to happen, um, and I, I feel like we're headed there. Even though I'm picking Baltimore, I want them to win, but for some reason, I think it's going to be the Chiefs and the Niners. But okay, so but back, but back to the NFC title game, I'm picking the Niners. Um, I think it'll be great, high scoring. I'm going to go Lions thirty four. Wow, Lions twenty eight. Wait, what? <laughs> Lions. I'm sorry, Niners. Th- Niners 34, Lions 28. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be that high scoring. Abe, you think so? I think so. I think if it goes Mark? high scoring, 49ers can bring that, pick that up. So I want it to be a low scoring game so Detroit can be the one to win. There you go. The only thing that scares me about Detroit is those, uh, those fumble issues that they had, like, a little bit in the season, I think it was like in the in the later part, like November, where Jared Goff kept fumbling a lot. I don't know. If, I'm not going to say the stage is going to get too big for him because he's been to a Super Bowl, but I can see him getting rattled a little bit in in San Fran or Santa Clara, wherever they play, and get get kind of like trying to come from behind, come back. I think it's going to be an uphill battle, but like they'll be in it, but I don't think he'll have enough. Cool. And for the record, guys, I, I am uh, I do want Detroit and Coach Campbell to win, but it's not going to happen. The 49ers are going to win, oh. and I have the Niners this week. Okay. Oh, hey, uh, did you – well, you didn't have my picks for last week. I was going to say, did you want to go over, like, the picks, uh, the, the score picks? I don't think he's. I don't think he's kept track since the season ended. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Abe, Abe won the season. Like, that's okay to admit that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I won. I came in second, right? No, no. What? <laughs> <laughs> the fans came in before you, Jake. Yeah, all the, the special <laughs> guests had a better record than you. Yeah, oh, this, no, the no. special guests, man. The special the guests. Last place bounced out. out. I don't want to hear that. Last place bounced you're, out. You were make the you were ten games behind. You were still ten games behind Robert. <laughs> really? Oh wow! Yes. <laughs> What do you mean? Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up right here. <laughs> he's trying yeah, to get it. You were... He's trying to. He's trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel to try to get some victory was, over me. It's not I gonna was, happen. I was. I was 151 and 89. Robert was 146 and 94. You were 136 and 101. Ooh. Rough, good. rough, rough. And real, real quick, guys, that leads us into the last segment. Uh, just basically, just. Quickly go over your Super Bowl picks, like what we uh, had originally. Yeah, I'm gonna okay, start with so, yours, Jake. No, start with Jake. What uh, was yours? Hold on, well, no, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have it right here. So Jake's was Cowboys and Chiefs. <laughs> totally wrong on one side of it. 
Mine, uh, mine was way, mine was wrong at all. I had the Eagles and the Dolphins. <laughs> what Oof. disappointment! Robert, Robert, yours is San Fran and Kansas City. Still in play. We should have made a wager for Mar- it. Damn it! Yeah. Marcos yeah, is yeah. Ravens and Cowboys. Pat was Miami and, and the Eagles. He's out. Brandon was yeah. Niners and Chiefs. Oh, me and Brandon are still in play. Audra was uh, Cowboys and Chiefs, and then a piece of shit Stephen was Cowboys and Ravens. <laughs> Cowboys disappointed. Well, uh, Paco. Oh, uh, Abe doesn't listen to the show, so he probably didn't hear the, his pick. It was uh, it was uh, San Fran, and um, I think he had Baltimore also. Oh, uh, shit, I didn't even get my uncles on there. I forgot who he you did. You didn't have the Chiefs, Robert? Paco? I'm oh. pretty sure it was the Ravens. Okay. Yeah, yeah you don't even listen to your own show. Oh, I just got to listen to so many episodes. That's why, I, like... Yeah, fuck out of here. Fuck yeah. out of here. Cool. Uh, with that being said, guys, good stuff, good stuff. Do you want to plug the socials, Abe? Yeah, uh, if you were to... Our email is going to be at the uh, Two Minute Drive Podcast. That is the number two T W O spelled out. Minute Drive Podcast at Outlook dot com. The X account is U R Roughness Pod. That's the letter U and then Roughness Pod for our X account. Roberts hitting up with the uh, Facebook account um, with the Two Minute Drive Podcast, and then uh, Jake doing the Instagram as well. Uh, we're getting some more followers, guys. Um, I know Robert, uh, he also shares on our LinkedIn. So I have, I'm on, I'm in a group on LinkedIn. It's a football group. So I also share our uh, podcast on there. Robert hasn't posted the last two, but whenever he does post on there, I'll go ahead and share it. So that way it gets into What are you talking group, about? But... I post every episode on there. It automatically. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it anyway. It anyway, automatically some, shares, homie. We got we got some good stuff coming up <laughs> for the new season, right, Robert? We got trips coming up. We got uh, we got uh, some new stuff that we're gonna do, uh, right, Robert? And then it'll all be, uh, I guess we'll talk about that in the new season. Yeah, let's uh, let's leave it as a tease. We won't give it away. We're definitely going bigger next season. Um, we bigger got cross- and better. We, we got crossovers planned. We got um, <clears throat> more special guests. Um, yeah, well, a lot of a lot of fun stuff in the works. Yeah, real quick, we ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, next week uh, I will be out due to a foreseeable injury of a broken foot. Sadly, I will not be on next week's episode. You're predicting uh, your own injury? What's wrong with you? Yeah, you no, 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 no. You, we we give the injuries on here. You don't predict your own injury. What's what's the matter with you? Uh, be, all, and we all do the injuries uh, due to work. I'm working a lot next. No, week. don't listen. No, no, we'll, we'll report the injury next week if it happens. Um, but uh, these next, guys next week to... it'll next week it'll be my boy, me and Robert. Some special guest it... next week, I think. Uh, or is no, it just no special no, guest? No, special no it's guests. just the, it's just the dynamic duos next week. Robert and I, That's we cool, will guys. be doing the uh, show. Usually, when Robert and I, I mean, no offense to Jaco, Jaco brings the entertainment and stuff like that. But Robert and I, we can get into deep discussions. Uh, ah. Robert and I have that kind of chemistry uh, with with each other. But uh, it's always good when it's me and my boy. And then uh, it's good when Jake goes on there too. Don't get all freaking butthurt and shit. I'll uh-huh. take you to Wing Daddy's. It's bad. <laughs> Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and you got a beer in the name with your name on it. But anyway, uh, yeah, next week it'll be me and my boy Palace, and uh, we got hopefully we'll have some uh, good stuff to give you guys. Yeah, yeah. But we um, we'll be back on what I'll be back on the following week for that's the, the Super Bowl, <clears throat> week, right? Yeah, in two weeks will be the big Super Bowl preview show, uh, depending on. Who ends up in the game? Uh, we have guests lined up, but it has to play into whatever matchup happens. So we won't give it away just yet, but we do have stuff lined up if whichever certain teams make it into the into the big game. And then we'll cap off the season one finale with the aftermath of the Super Bowl. So three three more episodes left in the season. Um, yeah, and it was always it's always great doing an episode with my boy Marcos, man. Yeah. Hey, anything on your um, draft coming up? Like, will you guys be doing like a special episode for the draft or oh, anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that? Well, yeah, we, yeah, like we Mark. mentioned earlier, that'll be the kickoff to yeah. season two. Will be the draft episode, and then we do the schedule episode, which I think is like so. The draft is like in May. April, I think. No, it's no, in May. April. April. No, the the draft is April. The yeah, schedule the, release is yeah. May. So we'll do the draft episode in April. And then yeah. we'll do the schedule episode in May, and then we take like a big break, and then we'll come back for the 
start of the regular season. Cool deal. I'll be tuned in, I promise. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, maybe we'll have you on for the, the draft because I know you like the college drafts, though. Do I get into that draft like hardcore? You don't know, man. I, yeah. I do. I'd like I'd like to bring my boy Marcos. I, I, I'd like to lock him in for that one because he and I can probably go into discussions on these college guys. Maybe Robert doesn't have much to say. <laughs> What's maybe that? Top you and I will have maybe what top ten? I'll, I'll do top ten. Speak bro. for yourself, man. I'll be prepared. Oh, I'll do my yeah. homework, unlike you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah, have anything cool. else, uh, Robert? No, just thanks once again uh, for Marcos for taking the time to come and talk with us. Um, I'm sure we can go on for hours talking about different kinds of topics. We can go into different tangents or whatever, and hopefully we'll we'll see you up there in Dallas again when Tampa comes to into town to visit. We'll, we'll get together and hang out again. I'll probably join next time, so just keep me posted on how much. Oh yeah, we will. See, I'll join you guys to the game and everything. So once that schedule yeah. comes out, once that schedule comes out, we'll we'll let you know right away because we'll have it figured yeah. out. Deal, let's do All that. Right. Well, I think that's going to do it for here. Uh, for all of us here at the Two Minute Drive Podcast, uh, we are out. Later, guys. <laughs>